The topic today I'm going to be presenting is gastritis. Gastritis. Definition. Gastritis is an inflammation of the gastric mucosa and is classified as either acute and chronic gastritis. The incidence is highest in fifth and sixth decades of life. Men are more frequently affected than women and it is more common in heavy drinkers and Acute gastritis. The risk factors and the causative agents for acute gastritis are ingestion of corrosives, erosives and infectious substances, aspirin and other unsafe, acute alcoholism, food substances like tea, paprika, clove, etc. and foods with rough texture and high temperature. That the mucosal lining composed of prostaglandins normally protects it from the action of gastric acid. But when it is destroyed due to any cause, like, like I listed in the previous slide, that the ba this barrier is penetrated and the HCL comes into contact with the mucosa and injury to the small vessels occur, due to which edema, hemorrhage and ulcer formation can occur at the site. <coughs> in this image, we can see the normal, the uh, injured and the ulcer formated mucosa. In the normal mucosa, there is damaging forces, but in opposite to that, there are defensive forces as well. If the damaging forces include gastric acidity and peptic enzymes, the defensive forces like surface mucus secretion, bicarbonate secretions, mucosal blood flow, etc., protect it from the damaging factors. But when these defensive forces are decreased due to some cause, the injury or uh, substances like H. pylori infection, the NSAIDs, aspirin, cigarettes, alcohol, etc., can damage in the mucosa and hence can lead to ulcer formation that may consist of necrotic debris, non specific acute inflammation, granulation tissue, and fibrosis. The clinical manifestations of acute gastritis are epigastric discomfort, abdominal tenderness cramping, belching, reflux, and severe nausea and vomiting, hematemesis, diarrhea. The morphology of gastric mucosa or acute gastritis includes edema, neutrophilic infiltrates, mucosal erosion, ulceration, and hemorrhage. In the slide, we can see the images of histological representation of the morphology and also the gross appearance as well. The diagnosis and management. Diagnostic factors include detailed history of food intake, medications, etc., the endoscopy and the histological examination of the biopsy sample. The medical management includes its anti and anti emetics, antacids, and prostaglandin E1 analogs. That therapy includes that initially the food and fluids are withheld until the nausea and vomiting are subsided, but then uh, the spicy foods, the caffeine, and the large and heavy meals are also withheld. Chronic gastritis is the chronic inflammation of the gastric mucosa. The causative agents or the etiological factors include um, age, it is more common in older adults, peptic ulcer disease, H. pylori infection, gastric, res gastric resection with gastrodigenostomy and gastric surgery, etc. The pathophysiology of chronic gastritis includes that the stomach lining first becomes thickened and erythematous and then becomes thin and atrophic. The continued deterioration and atrophy may lead to the loss of function of parietal cells which in which acid secretion decreases. Then there is inability to absorb vitamin B12 due to which pernicious enema can occur. Clinical manifestations include anorexia, feeling of fullness, dyspepsia, belching, vague epigastric pain, nausea, vomiting and intolerance to spicy and fatty food. The complications might include bleeding that is hemorrhage, pernicious. The morphology includes that the chronic inflammatory infiltrates are present in the lamina propria that may include lymphocytes or plasma cells. Metaplasia intestinal can occur and the precursor, this is the precursor lesion for adenocarcinoma. Intestinal atrophy can occur and also epithelial dysplasia may occur. In the image shown here, the chronic gastritis is shown, lymphocytic highly dense populated lymphocytic infiltrates are seen. The infiltration is also present in this slide as well 
Now, this is the case of acute gastric, uh, sorry, active chronic gastritis. Atrophic gastritis is present and this is the gross features showing in this image where there is hemorrhage and ulcer formations etc. The classification of gastritis is as follows acute gastritis and chronic gastritis. Acute gastritis is further classified as acute H. pylori gastritis, other acute infective gastritis and acute non-infective non gastritis. The chronic gastritis is further classified as type A, B, A, B and C gastritis. The type A gastritis includes autoimmune that mainly affects the body and the fundus part of the stomach. Autoimmune means that the autoantibodies, autoantibodies affect the body's own cells and destroy them and in return cause chronic gastritis or the chronic inflammation of the gastric mucosa. The type B, the H. pylori related infection. Uh, mainly affects antral part of the stomach. The type AB is environmental which means that environmental factors like um, for a certain food habits etc can affect the antral and the body part of the stomach. Type C, um, the chemical or reflux gastritis is due to GERD commonly and affects the antral and the body part of the um, stomach. The uncommon forms of gastritis also are also present and that uh, are rare hence not to be discussed. Hmm. Now here is the image. Uh, showing the grading of gastritis by Sydney system. Grade 1, um, the, it is divided into further that none, mild, moderate or severe gastritis. Number 1, activity, the neutrophilic infiltrations. N number 2, chronic inflammation or mononuclear cell infiltration. Now here we can see that the number of cells increase as the severity of the disease increases. The glandular atrophy is present that is pre um, affects mainly the antrum, the corpus, then the intestinal metaplasia which is the, uh, uh, the precursor of the etinocarcinoma is also seen. The helicobacter pylori density that increases with severity is also present. I thank you all for your patient listening. Jazakallah khair.